Hello, social media navigators. Hey, listen. God damn, not not you guys. No, God damn you navigating through the different social media platforms. Welcome to our channel. If this is your first time, thank you very much for checking us out. And if you end up liking this video, don't forget it and don't be shy to subscribe for more video game content and other pop culture stuff that we talk about on this channel. The day has finally come when Streets of Rage 4 is upon our hands. Yes, yes, and the hell yes. Unfortunately, not on my hands. God damn it. I'll explain that towards the end of the video why I do not have my copy of Streets of Rage 4 for as much of a fanatic I claim to be. Well, I am. I am. I am a fanatic. I own all of the Streets of Rage. Well, the, the only trilogy there is. Here it is. One, two, and three. Such beautiful treasure. The only reason I don't have Streets of Rage 4 because I did pre-order that through limited run games and I will also talk about that towards the end of the video. But in the meantime, let's just get to what you tune in this video for. To talk and to for me to share what are my top, in what order pretty much are my top three <laughs> Streets of Rage games which are the only three that exist up to today. Look, I'm just gonna get it out of the way. I'm not gonna go into detail even though I will talk about why I rank them in the way I rank these games. Actually here, let's just put it in the order from your point of... Of course, I dropped the games. Let's just put them in order for you to see. So, in the exact same order in the exact same number these games were released is the exact same order in which I rank them. Unfortunately for many of you, you will be turned off, you will give me thumbs down because Streets of Rage 3, it's favorited by many. It's the favorite of all time, the favorite from the trilogy. Unfortunately, it's the bottom of the barrel for me. It's my number three, Streets of Rage 2, it's my number two, and of course, Streets of Rage, the original, the one and only, number one, it's my number one. Let's jump into it and I'll explain why. Rather than to talk individually about each game, I'm gonna be doing sort of a comparison in between the games so you can kind of see my point of view on why I have these feelings, why I have these observations about each one of these games. I will be talking and comparing the graphical aspects, the gameplay, and the music, of course, which for me, it's what made this trilogy a golden treasure as much as it means to me. So that's why that is my top three Streets of Rage games. Oh. Well, yeah, I know it's a stupid thing to say when there are only three games to choose from. So it's not even a th top three. It is rather my ranking of the three Streets of Rage games. I am well, well aware and I acknowledge that Streets of Rage 3 is the top favorite for many people. For many of you out there, I know. But what I personally experience is what I got from these games and that's the impact they made on me when I started to play 1, 2, and 3. I gotta admit, the music is pretty much what killed the gameplay. I know it's not a big deal for many of you. In the contrary, I think for many of you, the Streets of Rage 3, it's the best as well. But as an 11 year old, 12 year old, I knew better and they were not fooling me with the type of composing they did on after the Streets of Rage 2. Let's start with the gameplay. In Streets of Rage 1, you have three protagonists, Adam, Alex and Blaze. You have three basic attacks. You have basic attacks with the B button, jump with C and a special attack with the A button, which prompted a fellow police officer to come and aid you whenever you called upon him. 
Pretty simple you would say, but it was the variation of attacks you could do once you grab or got a hold of an enemy by their head, which at that point you could elbow them, kick them, or throw them behind you, or pound them straight to the ground. As simple as these attacks may seem for today's standards on today's brawlers, all of these moves were innovative. In Streets of Rage 2, you have two new characters to choose from, Max and Skate. Not much to say and don't have a problem with them at all, other that they sure weren't my first picks. I still picked Alex or Blaze. Axel, not Alex, you dumbass, Axel. In Streets of Rage 3, what was up with these characters now? Let's start with the all fart Zan and his cybernetic arm. How the fuck is he out there fighting the dangerous streets of rage at his age? He obviously has a cybernetic arm because he probably lost his biological one somewhere somehow and now he thinks he can take on the world just because he took this cybernetic arm probably from either Jax from Mortal Kombat or the Winter Soldier. Who does this old fart think he is? Isn't he afraid of a hip fracture at this stage of his life? <laughs> yes, yes, he was powerful and had very cool, very cool moves I must say, but eh, it didn't do anything for me to pick him. And don't get me started on that freaking kangaroo. I know it isn't a selectable character from the get-go, but what the fuck? Seriously, what the fuck? This is not different than that pile of shit we got last September with Contra Rogue Corpse. Remember that infestation of a dumpster? <laughs> the one where you get to play as a panda? Yes, a fucking panda! <laughs> How in the name of video gaming did they dare to name this a Contra game? My Contra games should consist of Arnold and Stallone. That is it! If I saw someone playing with Zen and Room at the same time, I wouldn't have known it was Streets of Rage 3. For me, these characters didn't even click into the story. They just don't seem to fit in. But that's just me. I did not like these characters and I still don't to this day. And that is it. Hey, by the way, what the hell happened to Max? We do see him at the end credits. Where was this asshole all this time? <laughs> I know where! Working on his gluteus! <laughs> Streets of Rage 2 had additional attacks to the standard B inputs and to the B and C simultaneous inputs. If you press the directional button on either left or right twice plus the attack button right after, each character will execute what was called a blitz attack. Yes, I'm not kidding, this is from the manual. Special moves now consist of the characters themselves. There is no NPC's assistance and rather the characters execute their own special attacks. But the downside of this is that these moves take away from your health. So you have to be very conservative and plan your attacks accordingly because if an enemy moved away right as you executed an special attack, there went your health drain for nothing. And if you used these special attacks against a tough to bring down stage boss, you were pretty much jeopardizing your lives. Streets of Rage 3 had one thing that was very cool. Now you can perform special attacks with the weapons themselves. Sadly, I did not figure this out until later, later, later in my gaming years. And the weapons have a health bar too. What was the deal with that? Never understood that mechanic and I didn't really care since attacking with weapons was not my priority plan of attacks. A very cool addition to the Streets of Rage 3 is that now you could finally dodge an opponent or incoming projectiles. Something I think should have been figured out in the previous installments. You can simply dodge by pressing twice on the up or down directional pad. As innovative and awesome as all these new mechanics were, goddamn the difficulty came in hand in hand with all these new features, because Streets of Rage 3 was sure hard as shit. Honestly, I hardly ever finished this game and the only time I did was through a live cheat code. Not to mention that Streets of Rage 3 had multiple endings, and I never got to see them all. 
The final boss had a time limit. Were you kidding me with that? Streets of Rage 3 was already challenging as it was and now you dare to give me a time limit? Fuck off! Yes, 25 years later now, I'm pissed about that and I almost hate this game. The only reason why I don't add it entirely is because it's part of a great franchise. It's like having three kids. One, it's a perfect disciplined straight A student. The other one, it's your typical average next door kid. Average student. And the third, it's a freaking asshole, a bitchy ass brat. The kid hated by all the parents in the neighborhood because he or she is the devil roaming around the block creating chaos on anything he or she touches. But at the end, you love all three kids the same. I don't think so. And this is the kind of love I have for Streets of Rage 3. Gameplay mechanics overall were all great and the elements to play with, yes, they were as well. The Streets of Rage games did get better with time, but this is pretty much the end of the ride for me and right after Streets of Rage 2, I started to lose interest for the following reasons. Let's start with the stages and enemies themselves. Even though there were a few new enemies in stage additions, I felt as if the inspiration was just dying from the Streets of Rage 2 on. Let's begin with the stages, of course. Although the stages were not identical, they pretty much were the same scenes with the exception of the cleaned up graphics and some elements within. Let me explain in further detail. In Streets of Rage 1, you have your first stage, which is sort of a shopping mall. A promenade, a promenade some people would say. In Streets of Rage 2, first stage is just another twin copy with better looking sprites. Yeah, of course, you have to make them better. Then you have your urban looking downtown street alley straight lookalikes. Then you have your beach stages. Then this under construction bridge port area. Then the boat. Then this industrial factory stage. Then the elevator stage. And finally, the final Mr. X headquarters. Streets of Rage 2 and 3 had a few differences in one or two stages. I'm not gonna lie, but nothing that stood out for me to say it was an unforgettable stage. I mean, come on, even the stages that had something different did still lack originality. Take for instance this theme park stage. You can't tell me this was not a Disneyland inspiration. You're walking through the park then you enter the ride, and in the far background, you see the castle. Come on, don't tell me that's not Disneyland Castle. Upon exiting, you are immediately at the entrance of a baseball stadium park. Come on, seriously. You may be wondering, what's the big deal? Well, for those of you who are not familiar with the city of Anaheim geography, which is where California Disneyland is, Disneyland is literally two miles away from the Anaheim Angel Stadium. I know, I know, I know. It's Los Angeles Angels for the Major League Baseball. But my point is that these two Anaheim landmarks are within visible distances of one another. So, I will go on to say, engrave it on stone, that this stage is not originality. Nope. Jeez, like more than half of these games copy those of Streets of Rage 1. Where's the creativity? Seriously. I seriously and simply think Streets of Rage 2 and 3 lacked originality when it came to stage design. Enemies, eh, it's not far from the stages. Same as stages, a few new ones and the rest were the same with different color outfits or subtle sprite designs. Not much to say on this department. The music. The music I left it for last because it is what caught me the most out of this series. Me being a former musician, I knew better even at my younger years that everything after Streets of Rage 2 was just crap. 
Streets of Rage music was composed by Juso Koshiro, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. Juso Koshiro was the primary and main composer. Motohiro Kawashima was also a collaborator in this project. Motohiro Kawashima was also a collaborator in this project. He contributed a few tunes of his own for the Streets of Rage 2, and to my understanding, forgive me if I'm wrong on this fact, but last I checked, he took full control of the Streets of Rage 3 soundtrack, having Juso Koshiro just on silence. Sort of what happened to the Star Wars movies and the direction they went from the time George Lucas had full hands on his properties to the time Disney came along, pitched in their idea models and then took full control of these shitty ass Star Wars storylines they became to be nowadays. The Streets of Rage soundtracks were heavily influenced by electronic dance music such as house, techno, hard techno, breakbeat, uh, funk, and, and all of these had a nice mixture of Caribbean acoustics. Juso Koshiro used Roland keyboards, which are some of the top tier instruments in the music scene when it comes to keyboards. I own one myself and they're not cheap. Roland is very well known for having realistic sounds in their interface keyboards and with the reliability these keyboards offer, it came the compromising of the music quality on the Streets of Rage 3. Koshiro composed the Streets of Rage tunes with the Roland TR-808 and TR-9 keyboard beats with the Roland TB-303 synthesizers. For the Streets of Rage 3 soundtrack, Koshiro came out with the new composition method which he admits to using the automated composing system. Yes, this was the shit, it was the ass kicking club techno technique of the time that heavily relied on random nice sequences. Let me put this in simple terms. This method of composing music made it so much easier for musicians, especially DJs, to write techno tunes. How so you would ask? I'll demonstrate in a minute. All you have to do is press one single key on the keyboard and the rest is pretty much taken care of. Beats, tempo, chord progressions, etc. Forgive me if I'm talking too much music mambo jumbo right now and I understand if you get lost in this language especially if you're not so much of a musically inclined yourself. But let me demonstrate. This video of me I recorded while just dicking around one evening and by accident I came up with the main melody to the song Hello by Martin Solvay in Dragonette. You'll recognize it when you hear it. But forgive the audio quality as it was just a phone capture. You see, as shitty as that sound, it's that simple to make music and this is exactly what happened to the Streets of Rage music composing. One single key composition. Now let's dive into this and analyze how the Streets of Rage soundtracks got worse with each installment. In my eyes, that is. Well, in my ears. Now as we start to analyze the music for each one of these games, you'll start to see hopefully from my point of view on why I think the Streets of Rage score just got a lazy writing as it progressed. Let's dive into the Streets of Rage 1 soundtrack. We're gonna start and we're gonna go with stage 1 and we'll just go exactly as the stages went along. Stage 1, 2 and so forward. Let's start with stage one. You have the nice beat, which is one channel music. Then you have the full drum beat. And then of course you have this uh, special effects on the background. And then you have the bass. And then you have the guitar. 
So we have at least like four different channels of music instruments that are getting recorded into this composition. And then of course, you got the melody kicking in. Of course, another instrument, another channel. And then it kind of goes into a pre-verse progression of chords. And then it goes into what it would you would consider a chorus part of a song. And this is what the Streets of Rage soundtrack, Streets of Rage 1 soundtrack, stands out. That all of these songs had what you would have on a regular song, which is what a song consists of. A verse, sometimes a bridge, and a chorus. Sometimes songs have a pre-chorus, sometimes they have a pre-verse. And then of course, you have this piece right here, which is kind of a bridge, if you would say, But notice that you have different instrumentations along with the special effects. So it's not just one track playing on the back. You have the bass, the, the drums, and then the special effects. So that's stage one. Let's go ahead and jump into stage two. Nice drumming with the guitar. And then the nice drum and bass lines nice it, it gives it that nice urban tempo downtown hip hoppy feel with the nice organ of course the sirens we don't care about that but then we have the main melody kicking in here There you go, and then everything gets out, it's just the special effect, and the drums, and a little bit of bass strumming, and then the organ comes back in. So it's a nice mixture of when they pull in or pull out certain instruments, but you obviously, at this point, you already have at least like seven different channels, seven different instruments composing this score. Let's jump into the beach or stage three song, which is one of my favorite ones. Stage three, here it is. Here's where I noticed the Caribbean acoustics that I was just talking about earlier. Just slight percussions in there. And then of course we have the main melody. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's like a nice flute or air instrument on, on the background, it goes Woo! So notice also that the drum kit, of course, it, it's all done through a keyboard, but it varies on the key, on how it change. I'm sorry, not the key, the, how it changes the rhythm from one part of the song to another. And I'm not just talking about the pssst, 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 pssst. No, I'm talking about the variation the drum kit has. Now, this is the boat stage. One of my favorite ones, actually, from Streets of Rage 1. So, 
you can say that that was you can kind of tell that was just a one key pressing on the keyboard and they had the track queued up this part but everything else was an actual composition of different melodies and of course special effects like this one they hear and then in a while the guitar kicks in with a really 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 nice there you go that's what I was trying to get you so even though it's not a real guitar that they used it was all done through a keyboard you can tell that they actually had a music sheet for each one of these instruments the bass, the piano, the guitar and they had a melody written down for each one of these channels now we're gonna take a look at the very final stage which is also one of my favorite tunes from Street to Rage 1 so you already have three different channels going on here at least three different channels and this is an effect that they put into a bass instrument but you have the effects on, on the back uh, filling in the orchestration I like how this fits in this organ. And then the nice piano. It, is, it has that, uh, the typical, that nice 90s vibe into it. I love it. It has that nice funk sense into it. The device, the you, you could totally felt it when playing this final stage. And then again, a little break in the middle of the song. They threw in a few special effects so that it doesn't sound so empty. So this song had at least, had a had at least, at least 15 different instrumentations or channels excluding the special effects. But just on the instruments alone, it had a had at least 15. I don't know, I'm not digging into the history of the music writing of Streets of Rage, but just um, of how many instruments I can hear here with my headphones. I would say at least 15 different channels of instruments. Now brace yourselves because this high pitch ear piercing trash it's exactly what that is. There's no inspiration, no melodies whatsoever. It's just special effects compile into one there's no choruses no verses no bridges into any of these pile of garbage sounds what it is because it's I, I me personally don't even consider this music Seriously, what is that? This is all special effects. There's no instruments here. And the most they're using is probably no more than three channels. I don't know. I can't wrap my head around it. This just isn't music. 
I don't know. This is like something you do, you eat, you breathe when you're an acid or something. What is this? Next. Now, if I go to a rave, this is awesome, this is great, I'll get into a freaking trance with this shit. But it wasn't what I got used to in the first two Street of Rage games. What is this? This isn't a melody. It is not a melody. It's not a song. This is just a bunch of special effects thrown into. Of course, you have the drum beat on the back. What? is this what the fuck the drum beat is the only sort of melody if you would even call it but there's no instrumentation there's no melody it's just the special effects and that's where my main problem was with streets of rage 3 i don't know what this is look Listen to it! This was ass kicking in the 90s, but even as a kid, me, I didn't find this compelling! No! You guys spoiled me with awesome tunes on Streets of Rage 1 and some of the Streets of Rage 2, and then you throw this garbage at me! What the hell is this? What the fuck is this? I don't like it, I'm sorry, I don't like it. Streets of Rage 3 is the favorite to many of you, I know, I'm sorry. I don't like this shit. Seriously, what is this? An intergalactic communication system? What is this? You need to shut the fuck up. Oh God! Oh my God, what is this? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I don't know what the hell is this? I can't comprehend, I can't even... Uh, what key is this music on? What key is this song on? I can't tell, oh my God, I can't. I seriously can't. This is just lazy ass writing. You have a typical, just a, a drum beat on the back and a special effect. That's all. Two channels going on, three at the most with the bass. This is not music writing. What is it? I mean, it's not. Uh, uh, Oh. At some point, it's like it's just like they threw random noises at the track. Oh my! I mean, look at these. I can't even talk. It's like already fucking up with my brain cells. I can't. Oh, oh my god! Now this tune, it's kind of okay, but still trash. I remember this and this was one of my favorites, actually, from Streets of Rage 3. But still trash. Still trash. It goes back to what I was saying about having three kids, one of them is an asshole. This is the bastard child of the songs of the Streets of Rage 3. It's still trash. Next. My head, my head, my head, my head, my head, my head, my head is gonna fall out. My head is gonna fall out. My head is gonna fall out and my brain is gonna explode. My head is gonna fall out and my brain is gonna explode. Oh, 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 oh my god, what is the? Oh my god. Next, next, next. Uh. The 
hell is this? Sounds like a lo lots of mice going around, running around. What is this? This is not music! Oh my god, so hopefully, hopefully you were able to see the difference on how the Streets of Rage music just degraded itself from the first Streets of Rage to the last one. I hope Streets of Rage 4 has some kicking, ass kicking tunes because I will not tolerate this shit and I'm doing my best to refrain myself from looking at gameplays. I don't know what happened. Well, I know what happened, but I'm pretending not to know what happened. But that's why Streets of Rage 3 it's my bastard child. That's why it's the one I hate the most, but still love. <laughs> you may be wondering, well, if you're so much of a fanatic of the Streets of Rage games, how come you don't have Streets of Rage 4, you dumbass? Well, let me explain. I pre-ordered the Streets of Rage 4, the classic edition, which comes with a nice, really hardcover case, steel case, from limited run games. Little did I know that they were not gonna release or mail out the game at the release date which was at the time of this video, April 30th. Now this is where I would really 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 love to hear from you guys because it is my very first time ordering from limited run games and I know they have a vast merchandise to choose from of course limited run games and I have no clue how they work or how they go about when they release this type of limited merchandise. So have any of you ever ordered from them before? What's the time frame for you to get from the time they place the order from until the time you actually receive? Is it that far out from the time the actual game is released? Now it's not that I don't know how to read the fine print when, when you're going through the purchasing or the checkout yes it is very well stated that the item the game in this case the collector's edition whatever the case may be will not be chipped out till two or three months and i get that but i did not know that the game was actually going to release this early in the year in april I, I never found a concrete date therefore i thought that limited run games was gonna chip the game prior to the release date so that us who order from them would get the game right at the release date. Well, I did not know that many of these people just got their game early because they downloaded it. They have a digital version and that is totally fine. That is totally awesome for those of you who already got your hand on it. But me being a physical collector, I gotta have the cart cartridge, well, I the disc in this case because I did order it for the PS4. Now, who knows how long I'm gonna have to wait because it is anywhere from two to three months so damn by the time this quarantine is over I probably would have moved on to something else by the time I get the game we'll see now if you already own the digital copy go ahead and let me know how the game is on the comment section below but no spoilers please no spoilers because I, I really do want to experience and have the full experience once I get my hands on the physical copy. Whenever that will be. I thank you guys very much for sticking with me with this long ass video again. And I appreciate your viewership even if you disagree with my ranking of the Streets of Rage trilogy. I get it. I understand. Let's agree to disagree. But until next time. Thank you very much. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, leave, uh, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down if you didn't like it. Either way, share it to those of you, friends, or whoever you think may end up liking this video, or those of you you know that are into the Streets of Rage. Until next time, take care and game on, guys. and years later. <coughs> 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 See, I'm waiting.
on my streets of rage 4 just looking at the door constantly waiting for the mailman looking at my TV that's been off for the longest time my PS4 controller already ran out of battery I can charge her I don't have the energy to get up and charge it still waiting 